Welcome to the Eviva Experience, a podcast for women in those middling years of life where we talk about everything to do with thriving mentally and emotionally and finding more joy in life. Okay, so today I am chatting to one of my favorite people on the planet, and she is a self described fairy brand mother. So today, please welcome Miss Naomi Gora of Brand Whisperers. Thank you for having <laughs> no drama so the reason I wanted to chat to you is because something that's very dear to my heart is women being allowed to be fully themselves because often we think oh if I show this part people won't like me and oh and I ought to look like this this is what a professional this or a professional that looks like yes Yes. Be kicked out of the tribe, will be persecuted. Yes, people won't like me. So I kind of shut those parts of me away. And just for people who are listening, the reason I met you was um, I had a branding done and it was a great branding, but it didn't really feel like me. In fact, I was pictures of me in flowery dresses and that's not really me. And then I met you and you're like, no, I want you to be more you. Like the more Sarah you are, the more, the, the more you're going to attract the right kind of clients. Yeah. So that's what, tell me, that's what you do, isn't it? You, in a nutshell, do you want to tell rather than me telling you what you do? You tell me, you tell me what you do. It's like sort of a fortunate accident, really. So I've been in branding for many, many years. And then I came across personality types. And um, I noticed in the business world just how much people were trying to fit in and be quite proper or what they should be, which was really, one, making them miserable, but also making their businesses not really work. Because when you go out in the world wearing a professional mask, you don't attract people that are really going to work with you. You attract what the mask is putting out Mm. there, which is just draining and makes you burn out and I thought well that's no that's no way to be is it and when you're masking and being what you should be you have no competitive advantage because there's a thousand people looking like they should be rather than who they are um and when we're just who we are well nobody can compete with that because there's only one of us yes exactly now you've got this amazing uh tool that you use this magnificence thing tell me tell me about that the magnificence thing. Yes. So I have a, a business personality um, system and I call it the magnificence model. And so there's four quadrants to this and each quadrant of the magnificence model identifies a part of your personality. So you have your flow state. So the part of you where you really feel in flow in your business, then you have your grow state, which is your biggest place of growth. It may not feel so comfortable because, you know, growth is uncomfortable. But when you embrace your flow state and your grow state, you step into your genius state. Ooh. And then the other two quadrants of the model are your uh oh state. This is where you self sabotage. It, it's the part of your personality that sort of tricks you in staying in your comfort zone. Um, but if you do that, then you don't grow. Mm. Your no state, which is your stress state. So if you run your business from this place or your life, it could apply to your life or your business, actually. Um, if you spend too much of your time in this no state of your personality, you'll become burnt out and miserable. So when you get these four quadrants of your personality aligned and in sync, that's when you step into your magnificence. Oh, I love that. And I think you've really helped me over the years because I did get very, very trapped by that no state, which I think was the the need to be perfect, the need to be credible as a therapist. And I can even remember I had a Christmas party because I work by myself. I invite my best friends around for my uh, work Christmas party. What a wonderful Um, idea. Yeah, and one of my friends, she dressed up. She thought she had to come as a therapist and it was hilarious. She she wore this very kind of, um, it was like a very... It was a very nice navy dress, but it was very formal. And she'd even got some uh, like pretend glasses to look. Yeah. And I was like, that's what you that's what you think a therapist should look like. And I thought I'd also been doing that. I've been dressing in this and, and projecting my 
image as a therapist as a certain way. Yes. Well, that's, I mean, that's traditionally what I, I mean, back if you thought of, you know, the eighties or nineties, I guess, Freud and all those sort of things, it was very sooty glasses. I must be very intelligent and super intelligent above all else and very proper. Yes. Um, but, but that's not what the world is like today. You can be a human no. and be intelligent and credible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am slightly sweary as we have found out, slightly sweary, slightly informal and I guess the right people come to me because they like that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, there are people that want their therapist to be all glasses and sitting in a, you know, in one of those chairs with a, I don't know, glass of cognac being, you know, looking very. With a glass you know, of cognac. You can, I don't know. <laughs> that's what I'm <laughs> thinking of, you know, like the old, I think I'm thinking of like the 1960s where you walk into a therapist's office and he's got the bookshelves and yeah. he's got a big chair and he's like wearing a smoking jacket or something and, you know, and he's got a big beard and glasses. That's, that's yeah. sort of what I think of. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Can I could rock a beard? I don't think that would, that would look really I good. I don't know. I think he could pull, you know, maybe, maybe. <laughs> could give it a try but that's it like we don't have to fit those stereotypes you know we, and it's amazing how much social conditioning and stereotypes that are unconsciously already laid over us that we don't even know is there and we're like you know this is sort of stepping a bit into your world of therapy mm. not my world but um you know those masks that we think we have to do and we we don't even know that yeah, like and then we're like, why am I miserable? I don't know why I'm miserable. And it's like, well, mm. you've been conditioned in all these ways of what you should be. Yeah, and all the messaging that we get, like be a good girl, don't make waves or that kind of thing. Yeah. And there's also well, with the, the, the personality typing system as well, there are some types in the world that are more prevalent. There are, you know, some types that are, you know, a, a small group that sort of form, you know, 50% of the population. Um, but then for those types that are more rare or, or less common, we can walk around in the world going, what, what's wrong with me? And what, why don't I look like everybody mm. else? And why, when I try to act like everybody else, do I get it wrong? <laughs> yeah. And also it can feel really jarring because there's this disconnect between how you're portraying yourself and then how you actually feel on the inside. Yes. Which and is the those bits, thing. Yeah. And then those bits on the inside that are, there's parts of you that are unseen, you, 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 they don't get seen. So they don't get the love. No, exactly. Yes. They're unseen and unloved. And, and then you think unaccepted. you're unlovable because nobody loves the mask of you. Mm. You put your real self out there. It's not that people, you know, nobody loves you. It's that maybe they're not loving the mask. <laughs> yeah. And so um, how have you, as a businesswoman and as a mother, how have you started to be more uniquely you, being really this, um, what was the word we came up from my website? Unapologetic, can't even say it, unapologetically you. How have <laughs> you, Naomi Gora, been in your, in your life and in your, and in your business? Uh, so I've, I'm embracing... Um embracing or accepting the fact that I may not make sense to a lot of people <laughs> like mm -hmm. the things I do are a bit so I'm a creative person and that that is you know my gift and sometimes creative people think in rather abstract ways and so there'll be times where I go to conversations or group things and I will say something and I just watch the rest of the group of people go oh that's uh -huh. mm -hmm. lovely <laughs> or <laughs> the most brilliant thing ever and everyone goes uh-huh and I'm like I'm just gonna celebrate this on my own then until I find my people um and I actually had an experience not long ago that sort of I don't know highlights this when I got asked to um go and speak uh at the university as a, an alumni um for the business graduates so I graduated as a, a bachelor of commerce and I got asked back because I had a notable career apparently um, and so I stepped into this world of university and business graduates and on the, the guest list were all these very, very important um, position titles like CEO and, you know, um, global business manager and chief financial officer. And they were, you know, sounded very impressive. And I scanned down the list and then there was my title that was chief fairy brand mother. <laughs> <laughs> 
instantly I went, oh, my God, I can't turn up to this thing and be the chief fairy grandmother in this world of very important, serious suit people. Um, and then I remembered who I was and mm. I embraced my fairy godmother or fairy grandmother title, sorry, and went and rocked it anyway. Um so it's just, I think some of it's a bit of risk taking and also not risk taking. So you go, if I take this risk, people will like me. But if I take this risk, people may not like me, but I'm going to like me. Yes. If I take this risk, they might not like me, but I might like me. Yeah. Yes. That awesome. is, isn't that. And I think that's part of, you know, your Aviva program. Like that's, part of what you do is leading us through that state to get to that point where it's like I I, I just want me to like me yeah so tell me um do you mind if I ask you how you felt before Aviva and then how you felt afterwards yeah yeah okay yeah. so like before we did Aviva like how are you feeling yeah so I was feeling a bit um you know nothing was bad you know like there's nothing, there was nothing terribly wrong. I have this wonderful business, a wonderful child, wonderful friends, but I was just feeling a bit meh, I guess, like, you know, some of the thing, I guess is, a, you know, I guess I'm middle-aged now. Isn't that weird? <laughs> that's that's a horrible that's, word. I know. I guess that's, and I was sort of like, well, have, have, am I doing the things I want to do? And has life been right? And I don't know. And um, you know, you're in the stage of raising children and things and everything was just feeling a bit met, but I didn't really know why. Um, and as we worked through the Aviva program, I just realized like how much I had gone through in my life and how many things had happened and how I'd prevailed in so many areas and um, just had a real new sense of respect of you know how awesome I am actually <laughs> yeah. wow that was really hard and that was really hard and I took that challenge and I turned it around and it was amazing and um the the actually probably the the most amazing moment was at the end there were so many amazing moments along the way but the the moment was at the end where we had to choose our Aviva pose because you know your work is is somatic is it okay if I talk about that yeah 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 you can and um, we had to pick our Aviva pose. And when you said it, I was sort of like, oh, okay, yeah, I can do that. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe, you know, maybe I'd like hold my hand on my heart or something. And I didn't really think much of it. But then as you were taking us through the exercise, I found myself standing tall with my, you know, feet firmly on the ground, spread apart, and my arms lifted up in the air and my face and my chest lifted up, up in this like, pose of surrender like come at me world I don't even care anymore I'm just screw everything I'm gonna be me and whatever comes at me comes at me yeah. and it was this liberating incredible feeling I never expected yay I'm so happy for you I can still remember seeing your face on the screen going yes. <laughs> it was just yeah it was phenomenal it's um yeah, it's there were so many moments like that during Aviva where I thought, oh, this is an interesting exercise. But then actually, and I think that's something we can do when we're, you know, we're reading self-help books or doing traditional therapy is you intellectualize a lot of it. And, you know, as I read through the things, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's okay. But the thing that's different about Aviva is the embodiment of it. It's like taking it out of your intellectual thoughts and into living it. Um, and there was mm. multiple times through that process where I was surprised at the impact and the change it had. Nice. I'm so happy for you that you had this. <laughs> this is a wonderful experience. And tell me, are you doing anything differently after well, I know you're doing something pretty amazing, but <laughs> um, I feel like I am leveling up in a way that I haven't done or a way I'm leveling up in a way that I've wanted to for many years. But there's been other it's like there's been other traumas and other things stuck in the way, like gunky stuff stuck to me. Mm. Um, and I just feel like those things have been released and I'm taking a lot more risks. And I think that's another thing with your work and just being involved in this like Aviva community 
when you're hearing stories of, you know, other women that got up and took a risk and fell over and got laughed at, and we all laugh together and go, wasn't that funny? Not like, oh, aren't you an idiot? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, you're such a dick. I'd never do that. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're, such a dick. you're so stupid. It's like, oh my God, look at that risk she took and she fell over, but wasn't she fantastic while well, she did it? <laughs> And I also happen to know that you, well, you sent me some pictures of some really beautiful things that you've been creating since. Oh, my, my cakes. Yes. Yes. Oh, my cakes. Yes. So um, part, I think part of my Aviva awakening is my, my creativity. So my creativity was something that was sort of stifled at a, at a young age through different events and I found it very difficult to get back into. I felt like it is my life's calling, but I couldn't quite get there. And so since Aviva, I have been just embracing these creative moments. And, and for so long throughout my life, I've been striving for success. Um, and success, what I've realized since Aviva is success doesn't give me moments of satisfaction, whereas making like so I made this cake this mushroom cakes like a little forest cake with little frangipani um not frangi what is it uh marzipan 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 mushrooms on it and you know green cake moss floor and the the amount of satisfaction I got from creating that which had no outcome there's no success nobody's buying it I don't have to prove anything to anybody with it it was just like creating this beautiful thing gave me such immense satisfaction um, and fulfillment and joy that external rewards and striving just don't don't do yeah. don't get so, there. So you're in a flow state. You're doing you're doing it purely for the fun of doing it, which is like a hallmark of play. There's no there's no like outcome needed for play. You were just having fun. Yes, and the fact Ooh. that those mushrooms took eight hours eight hours to make and previously I would have been like that is such a waste of time mm. I don't have time to do that I have a million things to do I have a house to run I have a child to look after I should not be doing this and yet I took eight hours to make these little marzipan mushrooms that no you know well you know my friends saw and that's it yeah. and it was just just for me yes just for you Yes. Yeah. And that's the nice thing because women do give so much to everybody else and we don't think about ourselves. And that's one of the things that Eviva is about. You're right. It's about you can focus on you and not be selfish because we have these ideas that we know that it's selfish or something like that. But And you know what? I'm going to jump out there and you know, say maybe a bold statement, but I feel like even when we think we are looking after ourselves and not giving too much, Mm. We are still not looking after ourselves enough and we're still giving too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Well, thank you, my love. It's been a pleasure talking to you as always. It has been I'm, I'm a manager. We managed to keep it together and not just like fall apart. <laughs> I was actually sort of hoping it might happen. <laughs> So if you are interested, I'm going to put a link uh, below the blog post to Naomi's Brand Whisperers website. And you, you've you got a quiz, haven't you? Like a free quiz that people can take. <laughs> free find quiz out what people can find out what their type type is. And there's a guidebook that, you know, give you some some insights into your personality type and how to be more, more you. And when you're doing the quiz also, I encourage people to think of themselves like, as they were when they were children before, you know, you had to be a proper person with a job and a responsible adult. Yes. Uh, so try and remember back to those times where you um, where you could just be yourself as a child. Wonderful. Great. So the, just below this blog post or above it or something, there'll be a link to Brand Whisperers and you can find out all about the amazing Naomi. So oh. thank you, Ms. Gora. Thank will... you for having me. And thank <laughs> you for bringing Aviva into the world. <laughs> My pleasure. All righty. Thank you for listening to this edition of the Aviva Experience. I have a question for you. How do you want to feel today? Powerful? Playful? Present? Download my free guide, Feel your va-va-voom in 60 seconds and find out how.